Guzner etymologically stems from the warning yell that trespassers emit when the farmyard goose pecks them in the shippens. Alternatively, it might be from the Norse Gudsins Horgi, meaning at the idol's temple. Nobody actually knows, and nobody probably cares. Guzner itself is a pleasant village boasting two pubs, the Grapes and the Stag's Head. Two churches, one Anglican, the other Methodist, one post office, its own cake. Goosner cake it's called, aptly enough. A shortbread made from butter, coriander and caraway seeds, which, to be perfectly honest, is horrible. One village hall, a cottage called Mouse Cottage, which we had to mention for obvious reasons. And the most haunted <laughs> house in Britain. Allegedly. Surprisingly, it's also got its own football team, although their clubhouse isn't about to win any awards for architectural innovation. According to the window round the rear, it used to be a bank that, if the advert on the eaves is to be believed, sold quality gifts. Anyhow, let's get back to that Grade 2 listed Anglican church, St Mary's. It's been around since the 13th century enlarged in the 16th and then restored in the 19th. In the churchyard, there's a keel cross base. The font, the tower, the north arcade, we couldn't find any slot machines, the aisles and possibly the chancel are all 15th century. So, pretty much most of it then. Our favourite bit though is the buttresses, which due to subsidence or something are about as useless as Anne Widdicombe's Tinder account. Presumably, the wages were a bit dire in the 17th century, as, according to the records, the curate in 1622 had not preached himself and had procured only two sermons in the year. He kept ale to sell. Having to take a second job to make ends meet wasn't the worst that happened to the clergy in Guzna, though. Particularly the Catholic ones during the reign of the Catholic hating good Queen Bess. William Marsden and George Beasley were both ordained at the villainous anti Anglican school of Reims in France in the 16th century. Both were captured on their return, branded traitors, tortured, and executed, as you do. There's an enigmatic carved tombstone, probably 15th century, tucked away in the Middleton Chapel with the initials AR added at a later date. Suggestions on a postcard, please. And I want to mention the roof joists, recycled from a Viking longship, apparently. We could go on, but we're not going to. Guzner once had its own nuclear fallout shelter, back in the times when such places were in demand. It housed the infamous four-minute warning system for the whole of Great Britain and was operational right up until 1991. Nowadays it's a vet's, which is probably a step up. Then there's Jingle Hall. Typical of most halls in this, the flatter, scraggier end of Lancashire, Jingle Hall is more of a cottage with a pompous attitude than anything grand. It stands at the end of a long private drive and is surrounded by a moat that an asthmatic mouse wouldn't have difficulty crossing. An ancient, if rather short, stone bridge leads to a studded front door. Both are believed to be over 700 years old. The operative word in that previous paragraph, unfortunately, is private, which is why we're having to use photographs nicked from Google Images rather than actual footage. There are a lot of claims about Chingle Hall, such as it being the oldest surviving brick-built house in Britain. It dates from circa 1260, and the most haunted, with ghosts ranging from screaming skulls to ghastly murdered monks. The most famous priest connected with the place was John Wall, who was born there but spent most of his life in Kidderminster. Obviously the man was a masochist as well as a rebel, before being arrested and executed in Worcester in 1679 for his religious beliefs. After the execution, his dedicated, if not ghoulish band of followers took his dismembered head on a whirlwind tour of the country before returning it to Goosner and burying it in a secret location. 
Nowadays, his ghost is reported to walk the grounds. However, like we say, Jingle Hall is private, so bugger that then. Let's talk fairies instead. According to Melanie Warren, a collector of Northwest folk tales, in Goosen at one night, long ago, a happy band of fairies was seen in a field. They were dressed in full hunting gear, dancing and clapping and having fun. Unfortunately, that's all we could find on the subject, so it's probably time to move on. Roughly one and a half miles west of Goosner, at the intersection of two ridiculously busy country lanes, stands Barton Cross. The medieval base was rescued from a ditch in Victorian times and restored to its original plinth. The plinth itself is much older, as evidenced by the mysterious prehistoric cup and ring marks etched into it. They are cup and ring marks and not just dimples in the rock, honest. To the east of Goosner is the district of Stump Cross, so called because it's got the stump of a cross in it. Somewhere, as you've probably gathered from our use of Google Images again, we couldn't find it ourselves, although we did try our best. Also to the east of Goosner lies the village of Inglewhite, named from the Gaelic Aingiao, it's reckoned, referring to the will-o'-the-wisps often seen on the village green, apparently. Don't blame me, I'm guessing this from Wikipedia. Inglewhite also has a cross dating from the 15th century, it's a cross-heavy episode this week. The initials, H-C-I-M, probably the Lord of the Manors, but who knows, are engraved on the shaft, along with the date, 1675. Traditionally, the green was used for cattle and sheep fairs, as well as ducking old biddies when they got on people's nerves. In case you're wondering, the villagers dug their own ducking pit to go with the cook stool. But the former of these practices was stopped during Victorian times by a vicar, opposed to bull baiting. If you've ever tried putting a bull on the end of a hook, you'll understand why. There's a fairy well at Inglewhite, which we reckon might be this one. Recorded as St Anne's Well in 1700 by Dr Lee, who said that the water has a very sulphurous smell as strong as that at Harrogate in Yorkshire. The Green Man pub, which sounds ancient but was actually built in 1809, is regarded as one of eight places of special interest in the village. We're not sure why. It's got some rare Westmoreland slates on the roof apparently, but other than that we haven't got a clue. Anyhow, that just about wraps it up for this episode. Subscribe if you want to, and please try and join us again for the next one.